Are you a pig farmer there that has been hit by African swine fever? Or an enthusiastic farmer that wants to venture into swine production, but you are hesitant because of African swine fever? Maybe you're a student and you want to do your research on African swine fever, or you have an assignment. This video is intended to you. My name is Michael Buembo, AKA the Pig Monster. So let's just dive in. What is African swine fever? In Uganda, the disease has been endemic since 1900, and it causes over 100% mortalities. Looking at this photo, for example, we see that almost 70% of the pigs are down. So the disease is very, very contagious and dangerous. So the best way to eliminate the disease is to control it, probably. This disease is caused by an African swine fever virus. It is a double-stranded DNA virus. And it is always carried. The vector that has been identified to carry or to host the virus is a soft tick of the genus Onithodorus. So that is the tick that is responsible to spread African swine fever. Many cases, farmers make a mistake of restocking their farm in the next one week or one month after infestation. Surprisingly, the virus can remain dormant in cooked pig products or contaminated floors for three to six months. Viruses, they have a different mode of operation. Unlike other pathogens like bacteria, fungi, protozoa, among others, viruses don't live outside cells. They need cells to reproduce, to proliferate. So they can remain dormant on the surface, waiting for the conducive environment for them to become active. So when your flow has been contaminated and you introduce it new flow, new pigs, they are going to be affected by the dormant virus that has been awaiting for such a, an opportunity. So what is the epidemiology and transmission of the disease? There are two cycles I would like to talk about. And one is the sylvatic cycle, which involves the soft tick and the white hogs. So what hogs live out there in the wild, in the game parks? So the soft tick becomes the host for the virus. Within the body or within the cells of the soft tick, the virus can reproduce and grow. So what happens if it bites the white hog, the white hog becomes infected. So surprisingly, the white hog can as well infect the soft tick. So it becomes a cycle. The soft tick can infect uninfected white hogs, or the infected white hogs can infect uninfected soft ticks. Hope that's very clear. So it becomes a cycle. So the question would be now, if that is the sylvatic cycle between the white hogs and the soft ticks, how do animals that are housed or how do domestic animals become infected? Surprisingly, a surveillance that was done it was observed that these white hogs sometimes come near our households in the night. They come and eat on the leftovers. They come and eat on the, uh, on the, on the swill that has been thrown out there. They come close to the human dwellings in the night and they scavenge around. So during that time, they contaminate that environment. They can as well shed the salty ticks, which can can crawl and then enter into the barns and bite and therefore affect our domestic pigs. So sometimes there are pigs which are free ranging. Many farmers out there don't confine their pigs. They are doing a lot of free ranging. So those contaminated floors, as I told you, the virus can remain there. It gets hold onto these animals and then they are affected. So there is also a domestic cycle where infected pigs affect or infect healthy ones. So that is horizontal transmission. Those are the different cycles through which the virus is transmitted. 
within themselves. And surprisingly, the warthogs are not affected by the African swine fever. They are hosts, but they do not show clinical signs, just like the Sasquatch, that is the domestic pigs. The reason is because the warthogs, they have a gene, we call it the R-E-L-A, the RELA gene. The best pairs of the RELA gene of the warthog is aligned different, differently from the, the best pairs of the RELA gene in the domestic pig. And that difference in DNA brings the resistance in the white hogs, but causes serious losses and infection in the domestic pig. So moving forward, other transmission or contamination uh, methods do also exist. For example, use of contaminated equipment. For example, you use one injection across different herds. You use one tail docker across different herds. Pigs can be infected in that way. In Uganda, we have a culture where we dry our cilios on ground. Just imagine in this community, for example, if we have if we have pigs that are free ranging, they can easily come and contaminate this maize. They dung there, they urinate there. And also these people who are taking care of this maize, we do not know where they are pork lovers. So they can contaminate this maize. So when this maize is contaminated and then you are processing it to make feed for your animals, it becomes another pot pot potential source of the virus. I have been moving around the country, and this farm is in Nakasete, where you see that birds can easily access. This is the swine facility. The whole of this is the swine facility. But we see chickens around. These chickens can roam and free range around. And when they fell or they step onto contaminated floor, and then they come into the swine facility to peck and eat on the leftovers or the swiss or some grains on the ground, they carry the virus with themselves. Look at this owner that has not gotten any protective gear. Anybody can access the barn. Any visitors can come around. That is, a diff that is another way viruses or the disease can be spread. So man, livestock, vehicles, feed, and very many others are potential transmission agents of the virus. So I did um, a survey on WhatsApp, and I wanted to see what farmers think about African swine fever, who is responsible and who is to blame. All these stakeholders are important, the government, the farmer, the middlemen, and the extension service providers like the vets and, and, and nutritionists. So all these are important. But surprisingly, farmers in group one emphasized the fact that the middleman is the more important person here. Farmers in groups two still were in sync with group one. And likewise, farmers in group four, they were still in sync with group two and group one, with the exception of farmers in group three that said, yeah, we are the people who are most important and responsible for the spread of African swine fever. But overall, the survey showed that farmers blame middlemen. And these middlemen are the people who come and buy uh, pigs or pork from their farm. And they blame them for the spread of the African swine fever because they move from farm to farm. But little do they know that they have the full control over their farms. The farmers can, can, can control, they can impose strong biosecurity measures that can prevent these middlemen from coming near their farms. So I will talk about more about this in the next video. Um, what are the clinical signs of African swine fever? The most, of course, obvious and uh, evident sign is cyanosis, the purpling of different body parts, for example, the skin, you look at the ear is becoming purple, you look at the snout here, the snout is becoming purple, the legs are becoming purple, the abdomen, the abdomen can become purple. So that is the first clear sign, but of course it follows a very high fever. Within few hours and days, you are losing quite a number of pigs. So that's what people see. And they say we are probably 
affected by African swine fever. So when you see these signs, they are, they are just an indicator that maybe it's just a suspicion that you might be attacked by African swine fever. However, confirmatory tests are done by doing serology. Uh, we can do a PCR and then culture and isolate the virus and confirm the presence of the virus. But what people or farmers mainly see are the high fevers, the high temperatures, and the cyanosis or the purpling of the different parts of the skin. So if you have any other question, I'll be glad to respond to them. Come to my inbox or my email at pigmaster114 at gmail.com all go to our different channels on WhatsApp, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Please, you will come, come to our inbox, ask more, and we shall be glad to serve you. So see you in the next episode where I'm going to talk about what are the best ways to control African swine fever and what developments of different countries come up with in regard to African swine fever. Thank you.